Who here believes in paranormal activity, ghosts, etc.? Why or why not? I think a lot of stories and experiences are pareidolia, mistaking something simple for something paranormal, such as wild animal making crazy sounds or a pipe knocking or etc. etc. But I absolutely cannot deny that there is something happening that we don't fully understand. I've seen photos that really are unexplainable. There are too many anecdotal stories of people experiencing strange things, families, stories, and my own personal experiences that have shown me humans have not exhausted all knowledge of reality. Tiny little fun stories that do not prove anything but are interesting. Hope I didn't go on too long, but oh well, haha. A friend of my grandma's had a 20-something year old son, we'll call him Max, who tragically died in a fire in his apartment. It wrecked my grandma's friend, understandably. She was at home one day, shortly after the funeral, when her neighbor who lived across the street called her. This neighbor knew her son and about the tragedy. The neighbor told her, I don't know how to tell you this, but I'm looking out my front window and I can see Max standing in your driveway. Grandma's friend ran outside, but by the time she made it out there, he wasn't there anymore. Same grandma lived in a house built in 1900 that had been lived in by several other family members before her and grandpa moved in in the 60s, including one uncle who loved cars and loved flying down their long driveway, spraying gravel every time he came home. He was super loud about it. It would shake the glass in the windows of the kitchen that faced the driveway. For literal decades after this uncle had passed and the driveway had been paved with concrete, my grandparents, dad, and uncle would hear a loud car spraying gravel at high speed all down the driveway and experience a rattle in the glass of the kitchen windows. This happened during the day and the night. They'd look outside and there was never anyone there. When this grandma passed away, we were all at her townhouse she had lived in until the end. We were gathered around the coffee table in the living room where she had a Christmas tree dancing toy sitting. This toy had been enjoyed for decades and was getting sketchy in terms of functioning. Normally you just had to clap or make other loud noises and the tree would move and dance. But even that was a tall order for the toy at this point, with fresh batteries. So the family's sitting around and suddenly this tree that hadn't really responded to anything but the loudest of noises for years starts spinning. It had not done that for an extended period of time for years with loud noise, not to mention with a group of people that, sitting in a shocked silence watching it, they all got a little uneasy and chuckled about it and took the batteries out, which stopped it. As soon as the batteries are out, the smoke alarm in the kitchen, open floor plan, and just about 10 feet away starts going off. They're not cooking anything. They're eating cheese and crackers and stuff. It will not stop. They get to the point of getting a ladder and taking the smoke alarm down to take the batteries out. As soon as the batteries are out of the smoke alarm, the oxygen machine my grandma used for years goes off with its alarm. It was plugged in, but not in use, obviously. But there it is, going off like crazy, right after the smoke alarm stopped. After this, everyone was totally astounded, and believing this was grandma doing her best to let us know she was okay and still around. She loved reading about near-death experiences and paranormal stuff. Coincidence? Possibly. But I'd love to know the odds of three different devices, all connected to different power sources, malfunctioning in order, perfectly, starting when the others stop. To say we know everything, without leaving a window open for the unknown of an endless universe, is hubris and folly, in my opinion. I do believe I've lived in haunted houses before with actual poltergeists. The outside world was affected by the ghosts there or the spirits or whatever. We heard voices in the basement. My friend has a ghost that his whole family saw him make a bowl of pasta fly and smash into the ceiling, like directly up. Crazy shit, man. I grew up with two brothers. One was seven years older than me, Jay, and the other was a year younger than me, B. When I was 10, Jay was several years into a crippling meth addiction. He was angry, volatile, and sporadically violent. B and I primarily lived with our dad. Jay had a different dad, so we weren't around Jay very often. One weekend at my mom's house, B pissed Jay off, and Jay cold clocked him. B was only nine to Jay's 17. He hurt him pretty bad and really crushed B's feelings. Like so many other kids in fucked up families, I felt responsible for B. And as soon as I found out what happened, I did the only thing I could think of. I told my dad. My dad was always looking for a reason to start shit with my mom, so he raced over there and raised hell. During this knockdown drag out, Jay came in and was dragged into the middle of it. He was coming down and just wanted to leave, so he did. He said something like, I don't have time for your shit mom and fuck you Bob, and stormed out. 
That same night, him and two of his friends got stupid fucked up, played chicken on the highway, and all but one of them died, plus two other people in the car they hit. The time between J punching B and him dying was a matter of hours. The next morning, everything was really surreal. My dad woke us up and told us we didn't have to go to school, but there wasn't snow, so it was confusing. My mom wouldn't talk to us at all, just things were weird. My uncle came around and asked if I wanted to drive with him to go get donuts for everyone, and of course I was on board. We got to the shop, and he turned to me with tears in his eyes and said, he'd still be alive if you'd kept your fucking mouth shut. Then he got out of the car and slammed the door. I don't even know how I felt. I do know that I basically shut down, and I blamed myself for months. If I was responsible for Jay, then I was responsible for all of those people. If I'd kept quiet, they'd all be alive. It was a really dark and shitty time, and I didn't trust anyone enough to talk about it. Several months later, I was sitting in bed doing something dumb, no doubt, and there was a blinding white light outside my window, brighter than headlights even. I looked out to figure it out, and Jay walked right out of it, came up to the side of the house, and walked right into my bedroom. I wasn't scared in the slightest. In fact, I pulled the covers back and climbed into bed. He sat on the edge of the bed and just sat with me. We didn't say a word to each other, but I completely forgave myself for everything and knew beyond doubt that I did not cause what happened to him or any of the other people that died that night. I knew what I saw, what I felt, and what I overcame in those moments. So yes, I believe. I think there's something out there, but also that 99.99% .99 of hauntings are bullshit. Energy can never be created or destroyed, only transferred or changed. There's enough energy in your body at rest to power a 100 watt light bulb. If someone is really active, say running for their lives, they're going to be generating even more energy to use. If they die suddenly, that energy gets transferred into heat loss and decay. But what if some of it goes into a system we don't know about? For example, we have no idea where dark energy, the stuff making our universe expand at an accelerating rate is coming from. So we don't have energy as thoroughly mapped as we'd like to think we do. Not to say there's any merit in crap like healing crystals and salt candles that chase away negative energy. Just that maybe, if someone dies at the peak of their adrenaline-infused energy output, there's a tiny bit of it that sticks around and affects the world in weird ways. That being said, no door slamming, Ouija board, EVP spirit box, random scratches, or anything else that is extremely easy to explain is ever going to make me believe a place is haunted. That's just people scaring themselves. There's no such thing as a malicious ghost any more than an angry lightning bolt. It's just energy flowing where it wants to go. Put the sage away and calm down. I'm on the fence. Open-minded skeptic, if you will. Too many stories over hundreds of years to put down as group hallucinations, mental illness, natural phenomena. While I would agree 99% of experiences can be accounted for due to the aforementioned reasons, there's still the 1% uncertainty that everything is mundane and explainable to a satisfactory level. For instance, I saw a very tall human-shaped shadow in a cemetery one night. I was with one other person who also saw it. It was an amazing and confounding experience that I've yet to suitably explain even after sciencing the fuck out of it afterwards and the next day. Maybe it was paranormal, maybe it wasn't. Some things just don't have an easy answer or explanation. I used to be the biggest believer in the paranormal. Ghost stories were fascinating and I firmly believe that ghosts are real. Hell, I have many stories that are actual ghost stories. I've seen ghosts, or so I have thought. I can't explain a couple of incidents, but the last two ghost paranormal experiences I had do have an explanation carbon monoxide poisoning. I didn't even put that together until the last year. And yes, I heard the podcast on This American Life that I think was an interview with the Reddit poster about ghosts and carbon monoxide years ago. I was thinking about when I lived out west in my little apartment and I remembered someone telling me that a young woman or mother died in that cabin from carbon monoxide poisoning. She and her partner rented the cottage after I moved out. I'd moved clear across the country, had a kid, I wasn't really paying attention, when that happened, except that it was a terrible tragedy. So then it hits me. When I saw the ghost and heard a voice another time, I was probably experiencing a low-level carbon monoxide poisoning. This was in Colorado, and I'm sure it had to do with altitude. There are carbon detectors in a lot of homes and apartments there. About the voice, I was in bed, slowly waking up one morning, just realizing I'm awake, and I hear a woman's voice right up to my ear whisper, Don't drink the water. 
It didn't scare me, but it was unsettling. I didn't drink the water, and it turns out a few days later that the town's water supply had been compromised. I think it was sewage, a pipe burst. There were floods and rain about a week before the water ban. People couldn't drink the water for at least a week. It probably was just my subconscious telling me that if there's a flood, there could be a sewage break. I don't know. I want to believe in ghosts. I just haven't seen any in a long time. I do, because I've experienced encounters on many occasions. No, it wasn't some stupid Charlie Charlie game or using a Ouija board. Some can be excused as coincidence, but others, no. Cold breath of a ghost on my hand often at night. Voices, although cold, just be auditory hallucinations. Seeing figures in the light and dark. Friends have also seen the figured while not even being told about them. Creaking on my floor at night while both me and my cat are asleep. No, it isn't the house settling. They sounded almost exactly like human footsteps. Apologies for bad English. I've never been good at it. I don't believe, but it seems way more fun to believe. I've been spooked before and questioned where I stand on the subject, but only in the moment. Like one time my daughter's toy that was wrapped and under our Christmas tree randomly started going off when nobody was in the room. Of course, this happened in the middle of the night because everyone knows ghosts don't like sunlight. In all seriousness, when I found the toy, it had fallen over, causing a button to stick. We lived near train tracks at the time, so it's very likely a train had just come through. This often shook the living room slightly. My wife likes to remind me that neither of us heard a train at the time, but we had gotten so used to them that maybe it didn't just register. She is way more convinced of the supernatural than I am. Does it count as believing if I call all these hauntings bullshit, but at the same time I wouldn't, I don't know, visit a cemetery at night or abandoned places even during day because of possibility of weirdos being there and stuff like that? Also, there are things I cannot explain. Like at night, when I go to bed, I hear these small knocking sounds coming from the other ends of the room that I don't hear during the day, and sometimes it feels like something is hovering over me, but at the same time I just fall asleep. It is not like anything is happening, so I don't know. I would think there might be some weird stuff out there. My cat likes to stare at a certain point on the ceiling at times, but I wouldn't necessarily call them ghosts. And I call bullshit on these ghost shows, and luckily, I haven't experienced anything definitely supernatural yet. Four years old in the 90s, I climbed a floor-to-ceiling tall shelf, even though the folks told me never to do that. I get to the very top, and sure enough, the whole shelf tips and starts to go down. All of a sudden, time went in slow motion. The shelf was falling in slow motion movie style, crazy as hell. I was being held up against it as it fell and wasn't using my own muscles anymore, just limp and comfortable as my back got closer and closer to the ground. The entire fall lasted a while. When me and the shelf reached the floor, my body was gently placed slowly on the ground and the shelf placed alongside me with ease. Mom comes in, sees me, and of course gets angry and goes into hysterics. Mama, I didn't feel it. It didn't hurt. Not a scratch on me. Angel, ghost, or God, I don't know. But nobody can tell me shit. Real. Turns out, some kid on Oprah had the same damn experience. I got chills. I 100% believe in ghosts, or at least something paranormal. An experience happened in my house just today, actually. My husband made a phone call and hung up the phone and immediately a call came through with my dad's name. My dad has been deceased for almost four years. When my husband answered the phone, it was just a dial tone, and the phone number on the call list was six. I do. Why? Because I've seen a UFO. I was in the first grade. I was sitting in my bunk bed, meant to be asleep, but not. I noticed a light in my window, and I saw there the strangest thing. It was shaped like a diamond, but with rounded edges. It was very bright and obviously not human, because it was too large and too fast. It couldn't have been a drone, because when it left, it just disappeared. No nothing. No evidence that it had floated there. I still don't know what that thing was. Was it aliens, or fey, or spirits? Or maybe even a celestial being? I have no clue. I may report this to the government one day. Possibly wasn't aliens, because the biggest hallmark of alien visitation is men in black, and none visited the next day. Heck. There was no one visiting that day at all. I recalled this story to my class in fourth grade, and they all laughed at me. I don't believe, mostly because I think that the greatest unknown is the human brain itself. 
It's easy enough to say there's plenty out there we don't know about to justify a belief in ghosts, but really, I think once neuroscience can map out the workings of the brain in full, we'll have some pretty clear explanations for much of the phenomena we class as paranormal. Neuroscience is basically still in its infancy after all, and plenty of so-called paranormal experiences are easily explained away as sleep paralysis. Seeing as probably about half of the incidents of ghost sightings can be attributed to that one bug in our system, I reckon we'll discover the root of the other 50% once we understand all the bugs and misfirings the mind is capable of. Perhaps the scariest fact of all is that our senses and mind, the only thing actually anking us in the physical world rather than a chaotic dream world, all to ourselves, are so fallible. Also, believers are so fiercely committed to their beliefs that you would think at least one would have come up with conclusive proof by now to rub in people's faces. No, not only are there zero examples of the paranormal ever being shown to be real, absolutely every single paranormal claim that has ever become testable is shown to be false. Paranormal claims have a 100% track record of failure, not once in history has assuming the supernatural ever improved our understanding of anything, and such assumptions have always been the result of the following line of thinking, I don't understand this, I can't explain it, therefore magic. Whenever we have discovered the actual explanation for anything once attributed to the supernatural, the answer has turned out to be not supernatural, every single time, 100% of the time, without fail. The supernatural is made up nonsense that people slap on as a pretended explanation for anything they don't otherwise have an explanation for. That isn't a pathway to truth but it's sure a good way of being wrong all the time. Making up shit to explain something you don't understand doesn't mean you've actually explained anything. Well, since I've actually seen a ghost, I don't really have much choice in not believing. By the way, ghosts look like normal full color people. They're not wispy or translucent or anything like that. The one I saw also didn't move. She just stood on the staircase, and when I left to tell my dad and then came back, she was gone. The people who lived in the house had also seen her a few times. She was just standing in a closet one time when they opened it. That must have been fun, lol. She had died in the house many years before. All of us who had seen her had given the same description. I had no knowledge of her before seeing her. All this was only confirmed years afterward. Also, none of those who saw her had any form of mental illness, nor did we know her, and no, no one had died that we knew of around that time we saw her either. I do. Considering I have had stuff happen to me before, both human slash animal spirits and non-human, as I don't see why there wouldn't be species of spiritual life, I think a lot of scientists just fall into the trap of actively trying to set out to disprove something, rather than investigating without bias and attempting to gather evidence, which they can then dig further into after they've gathered. The thing with the paranormal is that it requires the other side to cooperate with any experiments you do, and you cannot force an entity to participate. You have no way of forcing them to stick around and follow your commands, so the scientific method is harder use of then, especially since if they do exist, we have absolutely zero definitive ideas as to what they are actually made of. Paranormal investigators assume they might be made of electromagnetic energy, but we do not know that. That could just simply be the method that they use to manifest. As for the idea that every inch of the planet would be haunted, well, I don't think that anyone sane has claimed that every single thing that dies becomes a ghost.